the Lions rookies are not that bad. All right, in this video, I'm gonna tell you the top three rookies so far this season for the Lions. And we know if, if we wanna get better um, anytime soon, the rookie class, Brad Holmes' first rookie class, like has to hit. We have to hit those guys, and then these next uh, two drafts where we're going to have a combined for, uh, four first-round picks. It's the only way to really um, get us back is to is to hit on those picks. And the reason is we're not going to get free agents. Um, I mean, we obviously we'll get some free agents, but some of the ones that you know we got to have, I just don't see them coming to Detroit after this season where we win one or two games, or zero games. So let's take a look at three players that have really stood out from Brad Holmes' first draft. And uh, the third and final one may surprise you, uh, but the first two probably won't. So the first one is Panay Sewell. I mean, yes, he's made mistakes, but for someone as young as himself to get thrown into a bad team as their primary left tackle with Jared Goff as your quarterback, who can't escape any pressure, who's not doing the best for you back there, uh, limited weapons on offense, defense, and you're Panay Sewell and you're put in at left tackle and you've played really well against a lot of good opponents. And so it just feels good to have a, a top pick like that. Just know, boom, he's going to be good for the next three, four, five years until he gets that next contract. We'll go from there. But for these next uh, handful of years, we have our two tackles set. Hopefully Decker comes back okay. we got our two tackles, our center. I mean, that's what we thought this year. Of course, injuries happen, but we just have um, a tackle. Whether he stays at left or moves back to right or whatever, right, left, doesn't matter. We have our guy, so it just feels good there. The next guy is Aleem McNeil. So this is, to me, one of the bigger um, storylines for Lions fans is um, him and our other first-round uh, D linemen. I mean, can these two guys be the guys like we need you guys because then we need to build in other places if they don't pr perform then we're screwed we got to build the d-line because i think the d-line um i mean it's no secret just changes everything if you can rush four and drop everybody else if you can get pressure on the quarterback I mean, there's so many things that the d-line just makes so much easier for you if you have them if you don't have them you're in big trouble so aleem mcneil is not just a you know Back in the 80s, 90s, you just put a big guy there, and his job was just to anchor. Don't get pushed around. Take up multiple blocks. Let the linebackers come in. In today's game, that D lineman has to be able to create for himself, not just eat up blocks, but wreak havoc, make a play, get past the old lineman one on one. You've got to win that. And so he's a he's a guy with some some juice, some move, some able. He's able to get in, disrupt. So I'm excited to see him develop, and I hope that he can develop. Because, man, if we can get a couple good D, D linemen and we've got a good edge rusher here maybe in the next draft, your D line will just change everything. I mean, when we had Indomitian and Sue and Nick Fairley and Willie Young, I mean, that's when the Lions were just good on defense for the only time, I, not the only time I can remember, but the most recent, 2013, 14, 15, is like, man, we were playing so good and just the D line was such a big part of that. All right, the third and final one that will uh, surprise you probably, but um, is Jerry Jacobs. So this guy is our corner. He comes in from undrafted from Arkansas, Arkansas State, or maybe both. I think it is both. I think he played both. Um, the guy's just not expected to play much, undrafted. But just, just like that, two of our top three corners go down, and he's put in, and he's He's just played more than we expected and played well. He, he's not just like straight up burnt out there. And, you know, going into the season, we had a lot of question marks on our secondary. And then when the um, injuries started to pile up, I mean, it's just very difficult. But this is the type of player, the type of thing you need in a rebuild is you need this undrafted guy that was sixth on the depth chart to come in get a chance, play well, and now is he your main guy going forward? May, you know, I don't know, but he's at least great depth. And But yeah, if you can go from undrafted to starter, now that's one less position, one less need we have in the draft and free agency going forward. Now, I don't know if he's that guy, and we still want to upgrade and see how Okuda comes back and Melifanu comes back, of course, but that's the type of stuff. If we get this undrafted rookie corner to come out just play well go against number ones at time against the opponent he's just been playing a lot more than we expected and he's just hanging in there nothing like 
like egregious, like terrible stuff. And that's, <laughs> I mean, you want to be better than that, but I mean, o Okuda even let off, let off stuff that was just like, man, what, that, didn't, that didn't look good. Where, where, where was he? He is not, he is like staying with his receivers. He's playing really well. So those are three guys that, man, have just played well. They're three rookies that we can really build on. And the other guys have done done well as well. I mean, some some in limited action, but Malafonu, of course, gets hurt. He's one I really wanted to keep my eye on. I, I, I think that'd be awesome if he was good and had a good, you um, know, if you have a big corner there. But we'll have to see what happens with him. But overall, I think these are three rookies that we can be happy about, moving forward, feel good about. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.